All right, we are live. It always takes a couple seconds. So hello, hello. 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 Oh my goodness, there's a puppy in the background. Yeah, <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. I know. <laughs> She's like, what's with my pants? <laughs> oh. Is that Darcy? No, that one was Lily. Oh, okay. Very cute, Brittany, regardless. Okay, hi everyone. We are talking about our July pick for the Historical Hellions. Awesome by Julie Garwood, our second Julie Garwood that we've read. So yeah, we'll go around and introduce ourselves and just talk about the ratings. Jessica, if you want to start. What was the other Julie Garwood we read? The Didn't bride. we read the bride? Oh, the bride. We read the bride. Yes, oh, that, was, that was a historical yeah. story, right? Okay. It was the bride. Yeah. Honestly, though, I filmed a video where I was saying we were reading this book. And then I was like, I'm so excited to read my first Julie Garwood book, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. I hopped in and I was like, no, I've read a Julie Garwood book <laughs> in this you book club. Not read The Secret? No, mm -mm, I haven't. I've only read the two that we've picked for the mm -hmm. historical audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, what, are we sharing our rating or what are we? Yeah, yeah. I forgot. Hi. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, um, I gave it five stars. It was so good. And I was like laughing and smiling like the whole time I was reading it. It was so cute. And I would say I was trying to, cause I did some sprints with my members today and I was trying to explain it to them. He's like an alpha mellow. He like is super alpha, but then he's like so caring and just like wants the best for her. And I, I just loved it. I mean, I did read over 400 pages of it just today because I always wait till the last minute, but it was so good. Yeah, that was my thought. Go ahead, Albie. Um, hi, I'm Albie. <laughs> Very y'all. Um, so for ransom, I gave it two stars. <laughs> wait, 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 no, no, no. I was really surprised because um, this is my first Julie Garwood historical. So a couple years ago, I read like she usually writes now like contemporary spy romances, and that's what okay. I knew her as, and then. When y'all read The Bride, I was like, wait, she's been around for a long time and written historicals, I didn't know. So I had like high expectations for this and it was a two, it was a two. Wow, oh my gosh. I would like to say I like that cover better than yeah, that. I, I bought this cover because mm -hmm. it, it was a lot nicer than I thought. Than I didn't know that cover even existed until someone was like posting yeah, on Instagram. This that not cover. Oh, it's they, new. They just did a cover for the bride too, which is really pretty. Okay. Because that's in the mass size, right? This is yeah, this is the max. So it's bigger yeah. than it, yeah. I like to use it's easier to read. So mm -hmm. that's nice. Super, super tiny. Yeah. yeah. I don't usually like that size, but for this long book, I feel like it would have been nice. Yeah, oh, and yeah. it fits in Jessica's yeah. sleeves. So go to art. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah. I'll have to look at that. I want to see what the bride looks like too. It's pretty. It's on Amazon. It was a little difficult reading this big of a book. Yeah, mine, I broke the line, which broke my heart. Even on the, the pages are paper thin, like paper thin. I was like, oh, obviously paper, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, moving on, Justin, I just took a nap. I swear to God. <laughs> well, I, I read it on KU, so I read it on my Kindle, so I didn't have like the whole like page issue. Um, and what was I? Oh, right, rating. Um, I gave it 3.5, so like I'm in the middle. So I think okay. I enjoyed it. It was definitely really funny. The banters are great. I think for me, it was just like the first 60%, I was like, this is a four star. And then the last 40% is like still 200 pages. And I think I was like ready for it to be over. <laughs> so, and then I felt like the secondary romance probably doesn't really need to be there. Uh, I think that's kind of why I feel like the last quarter just kind of dragged a lot for me. That's where um, that's where my 3.5 come from. But it was still a fun read. OK, cool, cool, cool. Uh, normally, we talk about our ratings before the live show, but for this one, we just jumped in. So I didn't know yet we were getting a two star in here. Um, wow. I just finished it at work like two hours ago. And I didn't really thought of my reading before, but I think I'm going to give it like a four stars. Mm. I really, really loved it. It's not like my favorite historical that I've ever read, like ever. So maybe that's why I'm not giving it a five, but I really did enjoy it. So I guess we have a mixture. We have a two, three, four, and a four star. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that's never happened. <laughs> yeah. 
that's, that's, why, that's why I think this live show will be fun to discuss because the, the range is so wide. Mm -hmm. um, right. I, saw, I saw LB's uh, Goodread review, so I know yeah. she, I know she has it too. <laughs> So, okay, I was reading some Goodreads reviews. I like to read them just to like see what other people are saying. And most people were complaining about the fact that this had a secondary romance. Mm -hmm. For me, it didn't bother me. Maybe because my favorite romance of all time, again, the magic, you know, the perfect <laughs> romance. That one, that that one has a secondary, secondary romance and people hate like the fact that it has a secondary romance. They wanted them to have their own book. I like it. It kind of reminds me of like a TV show where you're like seeing all these different characters and it makes a more sense as why the book is so freaking long. Yeah. yeah. I liked the secondary romance. I don't think it was underdone. I know people were like, oh, they should have just gotten their own book, but I actually really liked it. So I I kind of came from a different, a slightly different angle. I was actually really excited that there's two romances in there. But uh -huh. I guess I was expecting the sisters getting the romance. Right. Um, so when I noticed the other sister is not it's a super minor character. Mm -hmm. I was slightly disappointed. And then just the fact the two romance feel very similar. It's like the same dynamic. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I kind of wish if there are two, it would be a there would be a contrast between like the personality of the hero and the heroine. I feel that. I feel that. I agree that I think I when it started, I was like, oh, it's the two sisters. Like those are the two women yeah. we have. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely be them. And then the secondary romance though didn't come into play until like you said, like 60% into yeah. the book. And then you're like, why mm -hmm. is it just like who's Bridget? Like, what is this? Okay, they're getting a romance. So I did yeah. do that was underdeveloped to me. I it yeah. was pretty insta love too, because she already like loved him before we met them. So we didn't get to see any development. But uh I mean I still had fun with it. But I can see that critique. Like I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's told me it's a, it's two romances in one. I was like, no, I would feel like it's definitely just one romance, and that was like a side plot. Yeah, yeah. I would. It's, like one, it's one and a half. <laughs> one and a half romances. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real quick. This is not about the book. I love this comment that it says a four is still high. I love how we have to feel like we're playing four. That is so true because even a three star rating is not bad. Like no. that just means it was a good book. But I feel like. If it's not a five star, people think like you didn't like the book. Yeah. And even with the four, I don't really have like specific reasons as to why I disliked it. It just didn't give me five energy. Yeah. But yes, a four is still very high. Even a three is a really still a really good book in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, I don't know how everyone else's ratings work. Because uh, uh, I. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was looking at the comments. Go ahead. Oh, I, I, yeah. I think that's something I had to like explain. Like on my good read, I kind of break down how I judge my different star ratings. Mm -hmm. I only give out like five five star books a year. Like I really give five stars. So anything above three point five for me is like a book that I would recommend. So yeah. four is like super high. Four is already like a recommendation worthy book that I super enjoyed. Yeah, I agree. And for me, like, I'll rate books on, like, emotion, like, if I just really liked it, even if it probably, like, wasn't the best written, I'll still be like, nah, that's a five star, because that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, how you feel reading it. Like, yeah, I was, like, really getting the whole time reading this book. It was so funny. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay. I thought this was funnier than The Bride. I didn't realize, like, how hilarious her writing was. So yeah. many people told me that, that Julie Garwood's writing was, like, actually hilarious, and I didn't feel that in The Bride. Like this yeah. to me felt so different from that book. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, like the fact that she got married and didn't yeah. <laughs> know she's getting married. And then she's like, I got married on a horse. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I yeah, I, I I love that scene. That's that's really great. Like getting yeah. got married on a horseback. It's just a, such a unique kind of picture. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. This is my first Julie Garwood and yeah, I feel like her stuff still reads quite modern. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's very easy to read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think of um, Highlander romances now? Has this kind of way yeah. you toward them? Uh, I haven't read a lot. Like, this is literally my third one. Okay. Um, I, I, after uh, 
gentle feeling. I mean, I definitely enjoyed this one way more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say, I think as a whole subgenre, still probably not gonna be my favorite, but I would, it's not my go-to, mm -hmm. um, but this one's very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like the whole clan aspect and how they had like taken in another clan, but there was still a little bit of animosity and who would trust who. And every Julie Garwood, it's like the Scottish hate the English. And it's so oh, funny. Yeah. Like that was the whole point of the secret. And so I'm pretty sure that Ian and um, mm -hmm. Judith, sure. yeah. they were the couple from the secret. I'm like 70% sure. Okay. I, I don't remember yeah. character names. Yeah, they were. They were. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so that was their whole thing was like she was English and he was Scottish. And, or mm. British, and and he hated her, but then married her. Um, so I really love that. I feel like that's a Highland thing, though, because in Kingdom of Dreams, English and Scottish. Mm -hmm. There's a Hannah Howell book. It's English and Scottish. They just hate each other's guts. Mm -hmm. But it's just like always a central theme in mm -hmm. yeah. Julie Garwood's books. It's so funny. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I love Highlander and medieval romances. I think because we get so much Regency. I feel like it can be a little oversaturated, especially with everything being compared to Bridgerton. Mm -hmm. I love like something outside of the Regency time period. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, for sure. I always say that I hope like in the future, there's like an a struggle romance that has a step back with a poodle skirt or something. So like when oh. we're in the 1950s or something. So it's like so far away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. I don't think I read anything from that era. Mm -hmm. um, somebody mentioned Teresa Medeiros. We're going to be reading her next month, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Is it medieval? Next month is it medieval? Um, I thought that was September. The Scottish yeah. Highlands in 1780. Oh, is that September? <laughs> yeah, very well could be September. <laughs> is this September? I thought I this no, one was it's August. August. It is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I probably looked at it wrong. So that's why I'm a TBR. I know. Oh, it's for August. Yeah. Wait. No, this is another Highlander one. <laughs> oh, yay! How exciting. We didn't even intentionally do that. So we'll be I reading two Highlanders back back. Honestly, yeah. thank God. Because literally, the last couple ones I have not liked. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I like love medieval. That's I don't like, like medieval. No. It's not my, not my stick. So. I loved that Elizabeth Lau one we read. That one was medieval. I think that was our first year. Oh. That and was Tank. like our second book. I can't even tell you the plot of that book. I don't remember mm -hmm. it. I can't tell you the plot either, but uh, the the feeling. The feel okay. <laughs> um, okay, how many of you guys read The Secret? Just, just Jessica? Yeah. Oh, goodness. I honestly was going to read The Secret before this one, but then I didn't, I didn't have time. Yeah. I was going to do it for, there was a tag like in January about birth year books and i think the secret was from 92 mm -hmm. so i was gonna do that and then like it was february so like i think i missed the tag so <laughs> i just would have pushed it i uh, kind of just read someone's very thorough good read review for the secret and then just got a basic plot <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because like in the secret that one i feel like i don't even remember was that a marriage of convenience because like she had to go to Scotland like, and be uh, like an escort to see her best yeah, friend. He's an friend too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But I don't remember why they got married. But I do remember like his best friends like falling in love with her too. And it was hilarious. And those are our two heroes in this book. So mm. I thought that was yeah. Yeah. So another oh, thing I uh, no go ahead, Jessica. I was just gonna say what is the people in the comments are talking about was the sister and their meeting. I was I mean I guess like they weren't stereotypical but like it was a letdown like she had spent all this time trying to find her sister and then yeah. all of a sudden she was like i don't want to see her i yeah. don't care and you're like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. and like that was it like she never like reconciled yeah. with her sister it's like yeah. she doesn't have anything to do with her yeah yeah I, I think that's why the second like the the closing of the book was a letdown because like the sister kind of just like show off a, a couple scenes that's it and mm -hmm. then the whole mystery with the box is also kind of not all that interesting afterward. Yeah, yeah, so I do I, agree with that. I do agree. Yeah, because yeah, well, uh, like the, the enemy at the end doesn't feel so threatening. Like he's just like a, I don't know, he's just like a car cartoonish bad guy, really. Yeah, I do think we get a lot of that in old school historicals, though. Like the absolutely, I love that. It gives me like telenovela energy with yeah. like the 
they evil. Power. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I love yeah. it. I love the drama. Although, yeah, the jewelry box thing, I was like, okay. And? Well, and I don't like it when the, like, answer is someone we haven't met before. Because, like, they didn't even mention mm. the the guy that had taken the box until yeah. the end. And you're like, well, I wouldn't have known that was who did it because we didn't even know that was a character. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And then also at the end, doesn't Gillian reach out to King John, right? Because the king showed up, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, why didn't you just do that earlier? <laughs> <laughs> if you have that yeah. direct connection, why don't you just like call King John like earlier? Then you wouldn't have yeah. all this round about. <laughs> I mean, but she needed the box. Yeah. But yeah. it's really funny to me that they get the box, but they don't really know what it entails or their meaning. Like, what would be the harm of them knowing from the beginning so they like know how important it is? But mm -hmm. I guess then we wouldn't really have a book. So, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, what was I going to say? A lot of people didn't like how long the book was. I feel like that's another very like stereotypical, like old historical. Like, I'm thinking of like Kathleen Woodruess and Jude Devereux. Those are very long books. And I actually think like this, because it had two romances and because it like spanned a little bit longer, I didn't mind that it was long. I didn't mm -hmm. feel it. Maybe if it listened to a 16 hour audiobook, then <laughs> yes. But it, I didn't I didn't feel like it was too long. Yeah. I just wonder like contractually, why what what pushed her to make this one so long? Mm. Uh, it is like book two of a series. Like she could have cut in half at 100 more pages and then she got book three so unless unless in contrast she only can write two books so she needs to like squeeze all of it into one it just it's really interesting i wonder what, what was the backstory for her decision to to kind of write this super long one even though the, the the secret is only like a regular length um mm -hmm. novel our, I feel like most of hers are like normal. I, I don't know if this is her longest historical, but I don't know. I would have liked a more fleshed out story for um, Ramsey and Bridget. Mm -hmm. instead of both. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it could have cut at least 100 pages. Yeah. They said that's why they didn't message King John. I didn't message, <laughs> like they could just send, shoot a text. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny though that the highlanders like protected him because they could have just yeah. let those british soldiers all kill him but mm -hmm. so. yeah yeah oh, and I, I, I do also... really enjoy... oh sorry no go ahead i was just gonna say i do enjoy all the kind of po political intrigue i, I enjoyed that a lot like the clan and the scottish versus, versus british Mm -hmm. yeah and how like i think i feel like i read another one where it was like as soon as they like started taking their troops toward england they're like you know you're gonna go to war like if as soon as you start taking any troops into their country it's like full-out war is gonna to come mm -hmm. on so that happens yeah. too yeah um i was gonna say though i really loved her relationship with alec like that was super cute <laughs> and how like even when they got back it was like he only wanted to sleep with her because he felt safe yeah. He was adorable. Yeah. He's spilling all her secrets. <laughs> She's like, yeah. her what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I love that dynamic. And also, like, this is really, like, not that big part of, well, I guess it is, uh, Julian's relationship with her uncle, I also really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah like, the, the uncle turned out to be a very nice guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we only mm -hmm. had like 20 pages of that because someone else was like, oh, I think it was Cheryl that told me she's like, oh, the uncle's really fun. And I was like, oh, I was so excited to meet him. And then it's like, we only had him for like 20 pages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 500, 550, 600. Yeah. Yeah. But that was towards the beginning of the book really was stronger because that's <laughs> all of that stuff was in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But have yeah. you guys read um, In Bed with the Highlander by Maya Banks? No, surprisingly mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. so that was my first. That was my first one. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the one other Highlander that you've read, Justin. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. out of the three, um, the plot yeah. seemed very similar though, because like the same thing. She gets kidnapped with a, a boy, and it's his. I don't remember if it's his dad that's the Laird, and then he's like, "Oh, don't worry. Like my dad will come save us." And then she ends up going, and then they get married to yeah. protect her from these guys who are trying to. <laughs> 
her for her money or something. She like inherited a bunch of money from the king. So they felt yeah. very similar. Yeah. You know, I've noticed that with like older historicals, like not stories being repeated, but like you really can't tell, only tell so many tropes. Like mm -hmm. Joanna Lindsay, like Love Only Once, that reminds me of Bridgerton. Um, Shayna, there's a recent historical that's kind of similar to that one. You said Kay Bateman in my interview, oh, she what? said that she literally took that from Shanna. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because well, I feel like both about like, the same, but like the setup. Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like because they're they were like the building blocks for historical romance. <laughs> a lot of like newer authors that are releasing probably mm -hmm. read those historic romances. Like that was yeah. their generation, so mm -hmm. and were probably like what inspired them. So I feel like we do see a lot of similarities between older mm -hmm. historicals and newer historicals. Mm -hmm. uh, republished. I saw a review of the audiobook. I don't oh, know. A lot of people said the audiobook was really good, though. That the narrator is really good. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't love this. I'm worried about this happening with Kathleen Woodowas, though, because aren't they re releasing her audios this year? Well, they took yeah. out. No. Who was that? That was Judith McNaught. Never mind. Oh. I was like, they took oh. out scenes that were problematic, but that was Judith. That was Whitney, my love. The new ones mm -hmm. take out the, I think, the beginning scenes. But even like we yeah. talk about this all the time, but like Lisa Kleypas's Hathaway series, Hathaway series? No. Yeah? yeah. No, the Wallflower series, yeah. Secret of a Summer Night, and something else. They're different. And yeah. that one's like, I feel like sneaky, but we know that Whitney, my love, is different. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know if Kathleen Woodowis, because I, I haven't read any of her other than Shanna, any of her books, um, but I know some of them are questionable with the mm -hmm. content. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, the pushback. Okay. Because I know that Jen and Crystal were going to do one for their book club. Um, but that was pushed back. So, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they're going to cut stuff out of those or not. How true mm -hmm. to the book they're going to keep them. But like mm -hmm. a lot of it is problematic. So you're going to be cutting out a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read any of her old ones? I started A Wolf in the Dove and then I was like, no. Really? Is that the first <laughs> historical romance? Yeah, it's officially the first. Yeah, I wanted to buy it, but I'm like, I don't know. Oh, The Wolf in the Dove is? I it thought was, someone said that it was. I thought it was the flame it, and the flower. Is it the wolf and the dove? No. But I think a wolf and the dove is the one that got like the most popularity when it first came out. It's one of the two. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the oh, first one is like red on the cover, if I remember. The red mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of covers for the wolf cover. This one and it has. I thought mm -hmm. that was the first. I don't know. I, I have both. No I watched a video with someone that I think it was um. Shells, they have a TikTok and they do like yeah. the history of yeah. romance novels. I thought they talked about that on their channel. What was the other one? A Rose in Winter? Is that the one you guys said? Um, oh, I thought it was either know. Flame of the Flower or. Yeah. The, the one you didn't want. I have them both right here. Hold on. Flame of the Flower is 72. Wolf and the Dove is 74. So it's okay. Flame of the Flower. But then you yes. said Wolf and the Dove was like the one that really. Mm -hmm. I think, okay. Yeah. It was like, I remember like people talking about like how bookstores would have like lines wrapping around the building when this one came out. That's great. Which would make sense if it was technically a second release because then people would have already known like her writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love this. These red pages. I wish all books had red pages. Yeah. Yeah. One of my grandma's books has that like over there. I'm at my grandma's for the summer. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I got her old books. They're fun. Oh, yeah, does she have an order? She doesn't. I asked if she did, and she's like, no. You <laughs> found my grandfather's books. They're like Webb Griffin and like World War II history nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's my, my grandma's. Yeah. They read like uh, World War One or like spy fiction novels. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> my siblings will get to inherit all of this. <laughs> like I don't want that actually. <laughs> I mean, your collection's worth a lot of money though, if you think about it. So. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, you can read them or you can sell them. Like, it's still worth yeah. a lot. To a good home who would appreciate them. I'm telling you, man. I swear to God, I told them so many times. I'm like, if you sell my Beverly Jenkins books, you better get a pretty penny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or your Lisa Claypas. Oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> Knowing my parents, they'd just be like, here you go to people. <laughs> Garage sale for 50 cents. Literally. <laughs> literally. It always cracks me up. 
these people say they found where passion leads for 50 cents or a dollar. I'm like, man, that bookstore mm -hmm. didn't even know what they had. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, that's I mean, why I found Beverly Jenkins once. All my Beverly Jenkins paperbacks I found for two dollars at a thrift store, which is crazy. I know. Yeah. I pay a lot for those. Anyways, we got sidetracked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I always say though, why two oh. stars up? What was it about? Oh, yeah. Um, it was just oh, so yeah. long and tedious for me, and to me, this didn't read like the romances that I like to read. This felt more like. If y'all have read like Philippa Gregory, like the other Boleyn girl. I haven't read them, but I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a movie too. So. But it's, um, yeah, this was just, and I didn't feel like the romance, like everyone was talking about the second day of romance taking over the first one. I was like, where was the first? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get any feels from this at all. And like, even on the back cover of my edition, I don't know if it's the same synopsis, but like, it doesn't even mention um, our hero's name. It talks about, Bridget. I was like, Bridget is their hero? And then I was like, wait, no, it's Broderick. But like, they mm -hmm. don't even mention the hero on the back of the synopsis. And I just wasn't invested in any character. I liked Jillian, but mm -hmm. I didn't love her, you know? And it, it, you have, I have to love someone to give them that, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All, these, all these pages, you know? Yeah. So I guess that was my main issue with it was just if I'm gonna read a almost 600 page romance, I want to be romanced. <laughs> you mm. know? It just yeah. felt very, it felt very tedious. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Jessica, what were you saying before that? Uh, oh, I was gonna say I'm just disappointed in the cover. <laughs> I know that is not a pretty cover. This one, yeah. different. The secret is a gorgeous cover. This came out with Wine Katie. All of those are pretty. Yeah. 99 yeah. still a pretty clever. So what is this? Yeah. And the yeah, third one is not is even worse. The third one is like a purpley pink that has like random clip art. Like, look at this one. And it's like in volume two. Right. This one's my favorite. Yeah. Gorgeous. And the original bride is really pretty. The new bride is pretty too. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that cover, I was like, ooh. But then I saw this one. Right. I was like, hey, I can make it work. Yeah. yeah. That one's really pretty. But I have to say though, like the the original gay cover, like the the hardcover version of it is a lot better because the hardcover mm -hmm. version is it, a hard hardback and then it has like a translucent sleeve on it. Oh. So the landscape is on the actual cover and then the gate is on the translucent sleeve wrapped That's around. Cool. Yeah. That's really so, cool. So that one looks great. Uh yeah. it has two layers. Uh but yeah, the next <laughs> cover back. They could have done like a step back then where it was like the, the oh, no, that, that, but, like made this translucent and said, yeah. Mine doesn't even have that. Oh, it was ripped out. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Well, you're not missing much. <laughs> I mean, it's just that. So, yeah. Um, I will say though, do you know how many historicals I have where they have ripped out the step back? I'm like, for what purpose? I have. Most of mine that I got recently in a sale were ripped out and it's, I had to Google like what they even look like. <laughs> It's such a bum. But uh, this isn't like Scream Highland romance either. Like, again, no, I don't like why is it like, 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 like It gives like, very like, women's fiction energy. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with the cover. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's historically correct either. Mm -hmm. Like, I look way more British than <laughs> Scottish. Yeah. Well, maybe it's trying to show like the British to the Scottish, like the connection. Yeah, because you can see the Highland Castle kind of in the back. I think that's what it was attempting. Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, like when you go to the eye doctor, like look for the house. Oh, yeah. but it's in <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh. I oh. would be so mad. It ha it's happened to me all the time. Somebody mm -hmm. clearly has a vendetta against step backs. <laughs> um, for our main couple, though, I feel like julie garwood does it well where it's like a very headstrong heroine but not mm -hmm. like annoying like shanna was and like getting into trouble like yes. she yes. did get into trouble in this one but it wasn't her fault because like mm -hmm. though the guys that like set up that trap to kill her like yeah she didn't tell her husband where she was going but like yeah. she was set up so it wasn't like her being annoying and purposely yeah. getting into trouble so i did really like how she also like stood up to him he would like tell her something she's like i'm not doing that like just yeah. because you're my husband doesn't mean to get to, to boss me around and yeah. it was fun like seeing him be put in his place 
Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think she writes heroines, even from just comparing it to the bride, she writes heroines that are very strong willed, but not stupid. Like a lot of times these strong willed heroines and historicals will do something that is so dangerous just because the hero told them not to. And I'm like, yeah. really? It was unnecessary. Like yeah. like literally Shannon. Or even, even Kingdom of Dreams. And I love that book. She That's was true. so stubborn in that book. Yeah. Just I think, like I just want to it's like to have the hero come back and save them again. I don't <laughs> know. Like I yeah. remember one of my teachers like blew my mind because I love Nancy Drew books. Like I still do. And she said like in all of the like, they're not the originals, but like the yellow ones from the 60s. Like, I think Ned or a man actually saved Nancy Drew every time. Mm. And I didn't even realize that till like my teacher told me. That. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know if that's like a shtick that they went with because of the time. Mm. So it's yeah. Like to be independent, but then be rescued. Mm. Mm -hmm. My man every time. But in general, like older historicals, the heroines are either super annoying and super dramatic, and the heroes are either like too dominating and just like assholes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. off the whole. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was like trying to think. I'm like, am I, am I on Jessica's channel right now? <laughs> <laughs> but this one, he was like, like yeah. uh, Jessica said, he was an alpha hero, but also kind of a little bit of a soft alpha hero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, she did a good job with both of the characters not being too much. Yeah, like, if I do like a direct comparison with the Joanna Lindsay one that we read, this hero mm -hmm. is that better version, because I feel like the Joanna Lindsay one, <laughs> there's just too much verbal abuse. <laughs> it was just, he's calling a lot of names. I was like, this is not, <laughs> not acceptable. Uh, but it's kind of funny, because I have no issue with, uh, Jillian, but I feel like Br Br Bridget was kind of stupid near the end, especially when she kind of just came in pretending to be the sister. I was yeah. like, <laughs> what? what are you doing? <laughs> That's very true, though. I was surprised when that happened. When yeah. she came in, she's like, I'm Christian. And I'm like, and I was like, why? This is a funny comment. Family. So it, well, it gets a pass because it was for her family. Yeah. <laughs> but it was sad that um, Broderick, is that his name? How he didn't tell her he left um, and like yeah. refused. I'm like, I got it. Like he wanted to protect her, but he didn't even tell her he was leaving. And then he was going to force her to go back to his keep. And that was him not even like bothering with an argument. He was like, I know she's going to just argue with me. So I'm going to do it behind her back. And that really hurt her. I don't know if I believe that she would believe that he married her to figure out the names of the men. Like, I don't know how she got that. That wouldn't even cross my mind that he like would only marry her so that she would tell right. him the name of the men. And that's what she thought at the end. And that's why she was mad. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's good, Alana. I did, was it again, the magic? Did you find again, the magic? <laughs> that one's great. That one's great. I need to find that one on hardcover. I could not collect hardcover and paperbacks. That would be too much. Mm -hmm. Her hard only Lisa Claypis and Beverly Jenkins do I do that because they're just so pretty. For some random reason, I own um, all of the Wilds of Linlow Castle by Eloisa James. I bought the large print paperback edition, <laughs> giant like black and white size, and I just I I bought like the first two, and then I was like, I have to just have them all look the same, and so like. They're like $35 for a paperback large print edition. Oh, oh yeah. I have a lot of large print editions for Beatrice Small. I don't know why. Mm. Mm. I've read crazy things about her books. Yeah, we They're only read one. Like Crystal, <laughs> Crystal read one, and I was like, is this even legal to publish? <laughs> oh, the style Hallie. I have that yeah. now. I'm really excited to read it. I, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes, I cannot remember if you've read that one yet. Have you? If you didn't like it, don't tell me. <laughs> I've only read two Lisa Clapuses, but one I hated and one I loved. So. Which ones? Um, the first one that I read ever was Cold Hearted Rake, and I gave it a two. 
That's like my oh. most watched video on my channel right now for some I, reason. I think that's a popular opinion though. People don't like that one from the Revenant. Yeah, um, I had the same sort of thing with this one where it had um the double romance with um because Winterborn and whoever I have like a secondary romance in that one and yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, was the other one that you read? Um, what's the first Hathaways? I can't remember. My Till Midnight? Oh, yeah. I love, I, I love that one with, um, they had the, yeah, I love that one. Oh, Cameron, I love him. That's such a good book. Um, I was going to say, he doesn't have like a, um, even a room? Like, you're the Laird of the Clan, aren't you worried someone's going to like kill you? I don't know. <laughs> That's true. But he did a, a lot of things throughout the book that, like, a lot of people are like, you're the leader of the clan. You're not supposed to be doing that. Right. Yeah, so. Right. It made him court. Boy. <laughs> but one of my favorite tropes in one where, like, they get married to, like, the leader is when they be everybody becomes protective of her. Because that happened mm -hmm. in the secret. And I thought that was so cute. Like, all of his men were like, she's ours. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. there's no question. She's ours. We're going to protect her. And I was like, yeah, you are. Yeah. Like, so yeah. cute. I and I love it in the situations where like the men love her before they even like even the hero does and the hero's like what the heck did you do to my men <laughs> yeah I love to connect like my books back to television and movies because I'm a tv and movie addict so like um if you think of like Khaleesi and Game of Thrones there's like the it's not a clan but you know like Cal Drogo they like don't like her at first and they're like she is ours and then like they become like syncopated together mm -hmm. i love when like it's like this joining in of like the outsider mm -hmm. yes yeah see a lot of people don't like cold-hearted rake yeah i love a pun though so that was the best part the cold-hearted rake <laughs> <laughs> i actually had a step back which was surprising so yeah. it's my only book with a step back that i own <laughs> what really because mm -hmm. I went and got a bunch of vintage ones and like half of them have like no step back at all. They're ripped out. <gasps> that is heartbreaking. I know. So I look at step back Saturday. I was like, I have nothing to post. So I just put the hashtag. I'm like, I don't have a step back. So sometimes I'll Google it and like, this is my step back. I'm like, no. It's not. <laughs> yeah. That I love. I love. It happens so a couple times. Yeah, they're like young and eager. Like, was it Porter? Was that his oh, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was super cute because, and then he like really wanted to show like the lair. He was like on his side, and it was really cute. And he was the one that ended up like saving the day a couple times for her too. Mm -hmm. it was just so cute. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all buy books because they're pretty. It's a romance thing. There's like, th there, no one sells romances near me. So I have like, <laughs> I don't ever find them. And I guess they're not even making step backs anymore. Mm -hmm. No, it's, yeah, not something. Like, else, thank yeah. goodness we have Joanna Shoup to put a step back on her actual cover. Her <laughs> that cover. That I love. Gosh, book four, I'm already excited. Yeah. Where the, um, the Duke gets even. Mm. January 23rd. 2023. <laughs> yeah, that cover. But even, I think. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead, Justin. Oh, I was just gonna say, even like the book two of the Red Cats has a pretty decent cover too. I love. I love that one so mm -hmm. so much. But she, yeah. I think, has always been like, give me the vintage feel because like the Red Cats mm -hmm. is a very sweeping cover, yeah. and we finally have a cover for that. That book came out like two year, three years ago. Oh, the wow. Red Cats. Yeah. It's been so long. Yeah. And I like how her covers are like similar when they're within the series. Mm -hmm. Like I hate when authors go like for a totally different vibe mm -hmm. or like that weird phase where we were like transitioning to mass market paperback and like books in the series were either mass market or a max max. Mm -hmm. whatever they're called. Joanna Shoup told me though that the cover of her second book was that. Um, she said it was a Tessa Dare. Yeah, it was. An unused photo from mm -hmm. Tessa Dare. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's why it looks different than book one. Because book one has just like a normal. Yeah, it's, um, they're kind of like embracing like by the yeah. beach in the air sign. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then yeah. like two through four are like all. Like, I guess they the just like stuck with the same vibe after book two. And I'm like, yes. No. Because <laughs> yeah. I don't think they were doing. I think because the Lady Gets Lucky was like around when like COVID first happened and like mm -hmm. everything was shut down. So they couldn't do photo shoots. Mm-hmm. It was like mm -hmm. an unused photo shoot. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with like clean cover and no step back as long as it's just not like that boring Bridgerton cover. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. How are we doing all of Lisa's covers? Lisa Kleypas in that style? That, that is know? wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, I have all of them. There's, I don't want to name the author because I really like the author, but book one and book two in her series have beautiful covers. In book three, they did that um, that new mm. modern thing, and I'm not even gonna buy it because it's so attractive. <laughs> and her the book that she the well, one book I read by her was like one of my favorites of all time, but I'm like, mm -mm, it's not gonna be on my shelf. <laughs> That's true. I do think that Forever has been doing that a lot. I don't know if it's a Forever romance author, but mm. they've been really going towards the Bridgerton cover. Mm. But Avon hasn't, even though the Bridgerton covers with Avon. I so, know. Yeah. I don't know. This but yeah, I was gonna say Thrift Books has really good deals on mm -hmm. um, old books, and yeah. I've never had one with one ripped out. Yeah, so. yeah. Thrift yeah. Book was great for getting like um, book with snapbacks, mm -hmm. but you have to be you have to be very picky. Like I only buy when it's like in very good condition. Anything below that, yeah. yeah, anything below that, I, I wouldn't. Bother. Well, the cool thing with both thrift books and eBay is you can put notifications. So you can just put notifications mm -hmm. for like Lisa Claypis, Prince of Dreams, yeah. whatever you're looking for, it, and then they'll just email you when it's on sale or when there's like a yeah. listing for it. So that's yeah. normally how I find my covers now is I just put notifications for the ones like I really, really want. Thrift books though is hit and miss because sometimes you'll order a mass market and then get a hard cover, and then sometimes you think you're getting the hard cover and you're getting the mass market. They yeah. will accept like returns with no problem, but yeah, that's the only thing with thrift books is sometimes you do get the cover that you didn't expect. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's good. Sometimes yeah. it's a better cover. Um, yeah, that's sad. It is so I funny. Like, all the trade paperback all has like the step back mm -hmm. design. It's just like for mass market for some reason they wouldn't spend that money. So it's interesting. Hmm. Um, same way, same way. Sarah McQueen's new ones have the photo on the back still. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, like Bombshell? That. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And her new one needs to do. Yeah. She's you don't even get me started with Sarah McLean, okay? Nine Rules to Break. That was a great book. I love Bombshell. Yeah, they have the. I haven't read that one yet, but I know she showed book two, and it also has the couple on the back still. Well, like, how do you give us this? This is gorgeous. But I hate that cover. I love oh, that cover. Hate this cover bombshell. The cover of bombshell does not look historical. It looks like too modern. Yeah, okay. it looks sort of like saloony. Like it should yes. be almost western. So I love the back. I love the back. Mm -hmm. The front. <laughs> yeah. This one. Yeah. Like this one. The front. Okay, I mean, compares the new one she gave us for Nine Rules to Break. Well, that's, well, that's super ugly, but that uh, one just doesn't feel like a Sarah McLean historical. That cover, I, Maybe cover it's the background. I don't know, something about it is just like too modern. It's <laughs> your bangs or something. Yeah, I mean, the background does very much give I'm coming down the stairs for my prom pictures vibes, <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I love the color scheme. So that was my favorite. That's true. Um, I didn't know. Someone mentioned the third book. I didn't know this had a third book in the series. Yeah. Yeah. And but it's not about like... anybody we met. What is the third? It? it says it's Princess Gabrielle. Um, oh. Princess? And King John has arranged her marriage to a laird. And the laird is... Um, oh. Col Colum McHugh. Huh. Who's the most feared man in Scotland? I don't remember someone named Colum. Maybe uh -huh. he's one of their kids. Mm -hmm. on just the underlying theme. Having the king in all the books. Yeah. I mean, it's King John. I don't know if we'll see other characters, but... They had so many characters in here, though. You think they would... Mm -hmm. Oh, but did you guys, I got such bad vibes with a Gideon from the first time we met him. And mm -hmm. I was like, he is definitely, because he's like, oh, you got to make sure you protect her because someone's going to want to kill her if they figure out that she knows. And I was like, it's totally this guy. And then it was him. So, <laughs> I was like, he's really fishy. And then he ended up being the, the guy that did it all. 
Apparently, it's years and years oh. and years. Later. Oh, okay. So, is someone's child? Probably. I don't know last name. Was anybody a McHugh? Mc, McHugh? I don't feel like I'm saying that right. It says Mac Hugh. I mean, that happens sometimes with series. I mean, Judith McNaught did that. Her first one was a mid medieval one, and then it like jumps all the way to Regency. Oh, wow. It was like the descendants, like <laughs> way into the future. I've had really good luck on eBay. I've never had a bad one on eBay so far. Yeah. I bought, I usually buy my books for the book club from eBay, except for this one I got yeah. from Amazon. Because for, you can message the seller. So if you're not sure on a condition or something, you can just message them and they'll send you a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Book three is short. Yeah. Yeah. It's also written way later. It's like 2007. Yeah. Well, the first one is, there's a oh. seven year gap between the yeah. first and the second. They're all very spread out. Oh, they should write seven in year gap? Damn. <laughs> Yeah. It's so weird to have a series and you have like lots of years between because right. now it seems like yeah. if you're writing a series, you write that series. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like what was taking up her time in between? <laughs> it was booked in busy. after Ransom because I guess, I don't know if The Secret was as popular when it came out as it is now. Mm. But like I feel like if it was already popular when she wrote Ransom, she would want to write book three. Mm. Oh. Mm. she He has a princess cousin? I have no idea. Huh. Um, I also know that a lot of older historical romance authors would get stuck with publishers and like contracts. So it could have been something like yeah. that. Right. The time scenes. That's why they had like so many different pen names because they would just have to like abandon oh. a name, mm -hmm. switch mm -hmm. publishers. Mm -hmm. And it's really annoying because it's like early 2000s was the huge push for romantic suspense, I feel like. And so many mm -hmm. of them stayed. So like Julie yeah. Garwood. Because I think when it wasn't it during our Beverly Jenkins interview and she said like they really wanted me to write a romantic suspense and so that's what she did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I think that's what publishers were really pushing. I mean, I don't know if that was like selling more than historicals. Maybe it was, but I know that yeah, Beverly Jenkins like, didn't give up on historicals. <laughs> I know that Nora Roberts, like she's one of the best selling authors, I guess, for anyone. Like she's in, like in the list of top five authors. And her books that usually come out around the summer are a romantic suspense. Like mm -hmm. the legacy, Angel Falls, like they're usually made into like lifetime movies. And I think mm -hmm. they're gonna make some new ones for Netflix now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But a lot of old cool historical romance authors, they just abandon like historicals. Like uh, Yeah. Because I knew Julie Garwood from her spy novels. Yeah, mm -hmm. Julie Garwood, Jane Ann Krenz, who else? I can't did, even did Lori Foster write historicals? I don't know. I don't think so. Heather Graham, right? Doesn't she write it? Yeah, yeah. Susan Elizabeth Phillips, I think, writes romantic suspense too. Doesn't she? Did she write yeah. historicals? I thought she did. Maybe she didn't. She wrote contemporary, I know, but. Um, okay, so yeah, I guess she's somehow related to Broderick. Okay. Very loose. Oh yeah, Kat Martin, <laughs> Catherine Coulter, they all did. I feel like someone told me this a while ago and I forgot, but that's cool. I love when authors do that. Beverly Jenkins says that too. Wow. Even the romantic oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. is compared to her historical. Didn't she say every single book she's written is in the same world except for one? But she didn't except say which one. one it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got to figure it out because I watched yeah. that. Like, read all my book, babe. Read all I, of them. I cannot keep it straight. But yeah. Uh, Kat yeah. Martin, yeah. Catherine yeah. Cutler, Heather Graham, mm -hmm. Judith mm -hmm. Not. I mean, that wasn't a loss, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Every Their beef time. with Judith. <laughs> so funny. All the J's, all the J's went to historical ro uh, romance and suspended. Which is so sad though, because like they were so big for their historicals. Mm -hmm. And then to just like abandon that completely is really mm -hmm. sad. Maybe they I mean, especially Julie really Garwood, because I just have been really loving her book. I mean, I was gonna say, maybe it was more money. Yeah. I don't know how much money historical makes even today, other than Bridgerton. Yeah, I also like, want to know, like, what are they taking home? <laughs> I think historical is popular because historic romance readers are very loyal. Yeah. Like they continue to pick up historic romances, especially by the mm -hmm. same author. But I don't yeah. think it's a popular romance subgenre. Yeah. No, that, I can see it being consistent. Like they wouldn't lose money, but it's not yeah. going to gain publisher big bucks for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, and I feel like you always see like um, 
Nora Roberts, like even her romantic suspense is always on the bestseller. Mm. Um, and I would, I think Julie Garwood's doing really well with hers. I know she hasn't written one in a while mm. and I think her new one's coming out soon and it's been a few years, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, and like, I didn't, I haven't read her really old ones, but I do like to read um, Danielle Steele. Oh. I don't believe she wrote um, any historicals, but like her novels from like the 80s and 90s and even 70s were more like hard hitting romances. And now they're sort of, um, they're, they're very formulaic and they're more of a women's fiction. Mm. Yeah. I don't know why I was books curious earlier. I was like, who are like the top selling romance authors? And Daniel Steele and uh, Nora Roberts were like top. Yeah, Nora Roberts like is, I think Nora Roberts is the second most popular author. And number one is James Patterson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I think that's the highest paid as well. I don't, when I think of romance, I don't think of Danielle Steele and Nora Roberts. No, I don't either. I think of Nora Roberts for romance. I don't know. I it feel like a lot of women's fiction vibes. Yeah. I mean, I've never read a Nora, but like to me, she feels more women's fiction y. Well, I came in with Nora Roberts with, um, she wrote a quartet, which was like the, the brides and like sisters getting married. And that's really, I mean, there's nothing like more romantic than like wedding stuff. <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. that's how I knew her. Like I know Nora Roberts now is more known for those suspense novels. And um, like that she writes J.D. Rod, which are like. Yeah, I, I read those, those books. books. Those books I actually do like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they are Spurs though. Definitely oh, women's yeah. fiction. Yeah. I, like, I love Daniel Steele, but I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't read women. I don't even really read contemporary, so I don't feel like I would just pick up their books. Like yeah. I don't. It's hard for me now to find a book that I'm looking for because covers are so different from what I'm used to. Like um, I was reading, like my first romances that I read were like Nora Roberts, and then I read Fifty Shades of Grey before people knew what it was. Like I saw it in People magazine before it took off. I was like, oh, well, I'll buy this. It was on the shelf for the. I bought it the week it came out in book form. And then I read them all. And then after that, like y'all just did the Crossfire series by Sylvia Day. That was like the same aesthetic. And so when I would go to like Target, it would be like the Fifty Shades of Grey covers and then like the Crossfire covers and you sort of knew what you're gonna get. And around the same time, I read Abby Glines and she was what was a new genre called new adult fiction. And mm -hmm. it was like, like um, post-college or like 20 to like 25, and they're pretty spicy, small town romances, more than pretty spicy, they're pretty heavy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but she sort of knew what she was gonna get with like the guy on the cover. And then when I read It Happened One Summer, I was not expecting the heat level because I thought, oh, this is gonna be something I give my mom like to read. Yeah, <laughs> Just like yeah that's like my biggest beef with cartoon covers is or illustrated covers. It's not that they're ugly because some of them are nice. Mm -hmm. It's that I just feel like they're misleading. Like you yeah. just, don't know is this contemporary is this like yeah. romance is this new adult like what the heck is this and i feel like for new readers it's confusing yeah, yeah. with the cartoon covers i think automatically oh this is going to be no spice or very little like fade to black yeah, yeah. and then i'm like sister shook when yeah. i have like the peach scenes <laughs> there's a fly attacking me in this room but I feel like we get the same with historical romances because now when I look at a trade paperback cartoon cover historical romance, I'm like, this is not going to be good. Like, yeah. I've read a handful that are all kind of the same. They feel very modern, mostly closed door, feels more women's fiction. So now I just won't even pick them up if they're mm -hmm. in that cover, even though it could be like they could put Ransom in a trade paperback with the, yeah. I don't know. I feel like. Who else is it? Suzanne Enoch, like her new one is illustrated. Yeah. Hers have been before. Maybe one more book. Those are illustrated. I like those. My um, I have a Tessa Deer that I bought for my Kindle. And like for some reason I bought it when it had like the original cover. And now it's it like it's really, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Well, all of them are being illustrated now. So if you find a Tessa Deer in the streets, just snatch it up. Is it any Duchess will do? Isn't that one illustrated now? I don't know. I, don't I think know. the transition is for all of them. Mm. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong though. Yeah. Most of like, every time like I see like Joanna Shoop is gonna reveal a cover, I'm like, please let it be. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, this is what I wanted to talk about with Justin. Justin, let me pull up your Goodreads review. <laughs> Justin actually said he's over the 
obscenely handsome. Character. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> you said that you couldn't care that the romance is revolving around overtly emphasize attractive individuals, flawless beauty and hunking alpha. And you feel like it's a default for a lot of historicals. Mm. Expand on that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just joking. Um, I, especially, I feel like at least all the Scottish Highland romance I've read, it's kind of like dynamic. Like the women is like, oh, every man fell for her. And then the men say, oh, all the women chase after him. Um, I think for me, just because maybe because I work kind of in the advertising industry, so I'm more mm -hmm. sensitive to like, oh, we always need to like pick the kind of image perfect model. Um, and then with all the influencer stuff, I just rather want to read someone that's like imperfect than a yeah. character that's like everyone loves phys yeah. physically, not not like personality, but like physically. Yeah. yeah. And our historicals do follow a formula. Like, how many freaking redheads do we have in historicals? Like, the fiery, fiery personality. Yes. With like milky white skin, red hair, and green eyes. Like, I could tell you like 10. With that same, um, like, per not personality. Aesthetic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 But I do think, like, especially, like, 80s, 90s, that was, like, mm -hmm. exactly. it was just, like, the big, muscular Fabio kind of hero. Mm -hmm. And that's what you wanted in every single one of your historical romances. So. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like it's still the same, too. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. even now, if we get a plus size heroine, she's almost never plus size on the actual cover, like mm -hmm. Steph said. And almost a lot of the, he like, I feel like we've been a little bit more open on like plus size heroines, but not even like plus size heroes. Almost all of our heroes still have like these six pack abs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we don't really have that many plus size heroes. Not yeah. like they're six two with bulking like muscles and like, like genuinely, you know what I mean? Yeah. And how did these like dukes in the 1700s get six pack abs? <laughs> they probably didn't. I'm <laughs> telling you. I'm literally telling you. Like yeah. their hygiene was not the best. Okay. Like, come on. They are not. No. I know. That's like, I was just watching um, uh, The Mountain Between Us, which is a romance. It's like a modern romance, but like they're set in the wilderness for like three weeks and like there's a love scene. I'm like, Kate Winslet would not have like perfectly smooth under arms. Like, right. you, you know what I mean? It's like, there would definitely be like a little more earthy. I was just, well, I was going to talk about the, the red hair comment. That's like common across all genres though of romance, like mm -hmm. even contemporary romance, she's a redhead. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, I did at one point pick up like three in a row where she was, I was like, okay, redheads aren't like, I mean, they're not that special. Like, the, all of our heroines don't have to be this gorgeous redhead. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, redhead, green eyes, freckles that look like constellations. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's interesting, though. Someone brought up, so did you guys see Tessa Bailey's new cover? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she's like a a little curvy on the cover yeah so someone was like oh we get a plus size heroine and people are like and like tessa said yeah but it's like is she actually plus size does she oh, just no. have a curvy body she didn't look super i mean she still looked pretty thin just with like hips on the cover yeah, i didn't realize she was plus size or curvy till someone pointed out i just thought she was right. you know whatever which right. one secretly yours yeah yeah um, the pink one coming out Valentine's ish. No, she doesn't There's look always, like, that. Just looks like she looks like when they release curvy Barbie. Or it's like right, like, like it's it supposed to be curvy. Thing. You're like that's not plus size. Yeah. I but just I something where first. she was a redhead and her nickname was Red. I'm like very very creative. I remember someone <laughs> read a vintage romance from the '80s, and the heroine's name was Peaches McGee. <laughs> I think it was I might have been the book refuge like when I first did a deep dive into historicals I was watching just like anything I could find and someone's like our heroine is named Peaches McGee she's from like North Carolina I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> like, Peaches like oh my gosh it's like my mom had a student named Precious Cummings wow. I, can't, I literally cannot yeah yeah 
Yeah. Some um, things I've encountered are like, I can't believe they're real. Like this guy, um, my dad was friends with, he was a professor and he, his name is Richard, but he chose to go by Dick. So he was Dick Swallow. Wow. <laughs> That's bold. Yeah, that is bold. <laughs> I cannot. That's so funny. But yeah, I do agree with you, Justin. I am kind of over mm -hmm. that stereotype, like especially when it comes to historicals. Like, mm -hmm. I have never seen a plus size hero in a historical romance. Every single one of them has six pack abs, or they're like yeah. chunky with six pack abs. <laughs> right. They're I know. Like I know. Yeah. I mean, they'll be tall. They'll be super taller in our hair when it's like petite, but they're still like muscular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, it is. I mean, the romance, it is kind of a fantasy. So it doesn't have to be like completely realistic. Mm -hmm. But I think like maybe just because the last couple Scottish romance I've read, they're all set up like this. They're always they're super like that. emphasized. Yeah. Like, it's emphasized all the women chase after the guy and then like all the man falls for the girl. So it's just like very in your face. Yeah. Um, I think that's what I reacted to. Yeah. Mm. I liked that comment when I read it on your Goodreads though. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, it's true. So, yeah. <laughs> it gets old. Mm. Or if they are playing, they take a shower and then they're actually Cinderella like after with some soap. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like a makeover well, what, with like clean water was the secret ingredient. It happened in this one though, right? Like she got yeah. back, she showered, she got in a pretty dress, and he's all like, "You're beautiful." Like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. All right, what are you guys reading right now? We'll wrap up this live show with that. What are you guys reading right now? I, I literally just finished this, so this is what I was reading. Valid. Alvi, what are you reading? Um, well, this was like the only book I've read all month, which is bad, but I have like, I'm sorry, I actually brought these books down because it's like, they're going to ask me what I want to read. So I was like, I'm either gonna, I really <laughs> We do always ask. I was like, I'm either going to start um, Barbarian Alien mm -hmm. or it's not a romance, but Blonde by Joyce Carol Oates. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Justin? Uh, let's see. I did finish another romance, this one. Sailor Proof. Oh, did you like it? It's very wholesome. Like, okay. I enjoyed it. But this is the one where, when we were talking about cover, I was like, this one can use an illustration cover. <laughs> it doesn't oh. feel like it needs to be a, it's still good. Uh, I would recommend an audiobook. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to jump back like into the trailer after this. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. I started a novella by Sam Niskosta. It's, I think she, it's either, it either comes out today or tomorrow. It's called Run, Rabbit, Run. It's like a werewolf, werewolf mm -hmm. romance. Yeah. But there is a trick warning. It doesn't have any, like a traditional HEA. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, so everyone. Are werewolves the heroine and the hero? They're both werewolves. Okay. I wish it was Polly. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to read. I think I've said this before. I want to read like a paranormal romance where the hero is not supernatural, like at all. It's just the heroine. Like the heroine is the werewolf. The heroine is the vampire, mm -hmm. and the hero is the human who needs to be saved. <laughs> it's always the opposite. I know. I know. I've read some words like male, male, or sapphic, sapphic, but not. I feel, like there, I feel like there was a movie that's kind of like that dynamic, but I don't know if that's a romance. <laughs> I don't know if it ends happily. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah. All right. So next month, we are going to be reading uh, the Teresa Medeiros book. It's another Highlander. No, medieval one. My bad. It's medieval. Um, and that no, will be on Twitter. What? It's Highlander. Oh, yeah, that's what you decided on. <laughs> yeah. And that will be on Jessica's channel. I don't know what day we yep. decided for the show, but we'll let you guys know on Instagram. Yep. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Albie. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Everyone have a good day. Bye. Bye.